You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, no more dentures. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We're talking about dental implants today. And with us, we have uh, the founder of uh, the go-to place in the desert for dental implants. It is Coachella Valley's premier center for implant dentistry. With us, we have Dr. Shah. Dr. Shah, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy, for having me on the show today. Okay, good. Now, for people that don't know your practice, uh, you're right there on El Paseo. Uh, right. Who's the typical patient that comes in for dental implants? And also, I understand you do kind of uh, everything there. Yes, we're a comprehensive office. We do everything from fillings to extractions to veneers and composites and crowns and dentures. But what we pride ourselves mostly on is uh, taking care of our patients that either need implants currently and are in dentures or are heading that way in the near future and losing their teeth. Are there a lot of people in the desert? Because we talked at the top of the show, no more dentures, no more traditional dentures. Are there a lot of people in the desert wearing a denture? Hey, Randy, you would be really surprised. Uh, you could probably fill up 10 of our tennis gardens in the desert with people that have upper or lower dentures. So it's a big uh, uh, problem that, that right? we're trying to address, yes. So, and the people that are heading into dentures is, is an astronomical number. If you look at it, 120 million Americans today are missing at least one tooth. And that's projected to increase to 200 million over the next 15 years. And some statistics show that over 40 million Americans have an upper or lower denture. So it's a big problem. So it's a big problem. Now, if, if dental implants are so good, right, to secure a denture, right, or to replace missing teeth, why aren't they all doing it? I mean, there's so many denture wearers. What's your take on, on, on why they're not coming in to do it? So my take is there's, there are multiple reasons. Number one being is when you're a denture wearer, you stop going to your six-month recall appointments that we recommend as general dentist uh, for having the perfect uh, oral health over the years. So when they do go, it's because they have a problem, something is uh, bumping, they have sore spots, they're already frustrated when they get there, and then they are complaining about the cost of the reline. And next thing you know, they're very frustrated with a doctor who's uh, trying to help the patient. Um, so they don't get the options. That's very important. So they're just, they don't know their options. They don't know okay. what, how we have advanced in technology and what we're capable of today. That's one Because reason. they don't go to the dentist. Correct. Okay. They're That's out of the point. system. They're not in a recall system anymore. And another reason why denture wearers don't want to come to a dentist is because of the background in the past. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of a, of a denture wearer. They've been to a dentist multiple times. They have had extractions, they have had root canals, they have had fillings and crowns. And the, at the end, when all of the teeth are taken, uh, taken out, they have the sense of a feeling that it's over now. They're relieved. There's not going to be any more pressure or for them to go to the dentist. And a third problem is the price. Uh, um, we have 32 yeah. teeth in our mouth. And if you're a patient that didn't get the options that they could that, that they would be privy to, to get the care they need or want or seek, uh, you do not know that four or six implants might be able to replace 12 teeth. So you could do a whole arch of teeth on just like four or five implants? Yes, and okay. you don't have to replace every one of your 32 teeth, and which becomes a, an exuberant cost that uh, most can't afford. I probably can't afford that. Okay, all right. So um, uh, that's important to know uh, what can be done in, with, their, with their situation. And the third is being pain. You know, I can't tell you how often, Randy, I get done with an implant procedure and a patient tells me they didn't feel anything and it was easier than a, than a filling or, or, or than a crown, which are the most simplest procedures that we do as dentists. So we have to educate the patients and sit down with them and explain to them the entire process. And once we pass that apprehension, it's no longer a limiting factor okay. to get what you need. Now look, pain, look, some people feel more pain than others, but you're doing sedation, you're numbing the patient, so they don't really feel anything during the procedure. A lot of times they wake up and they don't know what happened. Is there, so you do IV sedation, oral sedation, different levels of sedation? So there are four levels of sedation. Okay. You know, the easy stuff, the cleaning and the fillings and so forth, if the patient requires an anxiolysis, what we call nitrous oxide, uh, uh, they come in, they have a good time, they laugh a little bit, we laugh a little bit and we get okay. the job done. And then there's oral sedation where we give them a pill, it could be Valium or, or Halcyon or something of that scenario that they take prior to their appointment, which sort of is a, a, a part of the conscious sedation uh, scenario where they're still awake, but yet very relaxed and calm. So with these more complex cases or full arch cases, we have the option of IV sedation. And a lot of the patients, I can tell you, they report back to us 
and tell us that they didn't feel or, or anything or they don't even remember. They woke up on somebody's couch and okay. essentially they are... Uh, somebody's uh, couch meaning the person that gave them a ride home. Precisely. Right? You have to have okay. a ride home with someone, right. correct? And uh, it's, uh, uh, it is very uh, uh, rewarding to see that happen for patients when they come in, they go to sleep, they don't me- remember any, anything happened, they don't feel any pain, and then they wake up to a beautiful smile, life-changing smile. Okay, how soon can they eat? So you take somebody maybe that uh, had a denture, and now you fix their a full arch of teeth with dental implants. How soon can they eat? They can eat the same day when they leave the practice, which most don't believe us. But uh, again, with our accuracy and, 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 and the way we do procedures now, the, the tools that we didn't have before, like guided surgery or uh, CT scanning and immediate loading, we can a lot of times get the patients to walk out with the teeth and eat the same day and uh, start the first day of their new lives. Okay, good. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. More about the dental implant process, what people can expect. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. Desert Dream Dentistry and Spa on El Paseo offers patients meticulous, personalized, one-on-one attention, cutting-edge technologies and latest techniques, cosmetic smile makeover procedures and spa services, aesthetic dental implants, and sleep dentistry to dream your dental anxieties away. Welcome to Desert Dream Dentistry and Spa, where your dream smile awaits. Welcome to Desert Dream Dentistry, where your dream smile awaits. Desert Dream Dentistry and Spa offers meticulous, personalized one-on-one attention, cutting-edge technologies, and latest techniques. I had discomfort in a cracked tooth, so I called Dr. Shaw. I came in a couple hours later. He resolved the issue and put a temporary in. Technology is paperless, and you see everything within seconds as soon as it's done. Complimentary boost opalescence in office teeth whitening for qualified new patients after exam, x-rays, and healthy mouth cleaning. You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting uh, denture. He is the, the desert's uh, premier center for implant dentistry. We have Dr. Shah. Okay, Dr. Shah. Now, age. How old can you be to get, like to the denture wearer or the person with really bad teeth, how old can you be to get this done? There's no particular age limitation. Uh, I, you had asked uh, why people might not get this procedure done. A lot of them self-diagnose. They go to a dentist that has a uh, 2D, 2D uh, technology and tells them they don't have enough bone and that's the end of them. That is true for that doctor and the technology that might not have the experience, but we rarely ever, that I recall, had to tell a patient, you don't have enough bone and we can't do anything for you. There's always something we can do for the patient. Okay. So uh, age, uh, you know, I had a 95-year-old patient. 95? Uh, yes. Why would they want to get dental implants? Yeah. Because they want the same thing as you and I want. Okay. They want to smile. They want to laugh. They want to go out with their friends and eat. They want to go to bingo. They want to have their grandkids at their retirement home. The same exact reasons why you and I like to have they want to nice eat looking and teeth. Yes. And self-esteem and confidence is very important for any human being. Now, when you're out and about in the desert, can you see... Like, can you spot people that don't like their teeth? There are telltale signs. I mean, if you see a patient that is uh, laughing and holding their hand over their uh, their mouth, that could be something that is uh, that they're hiding, essentially. All right. They're not coming out with their own self, the true self. Uh, um, so, yes, I can spot them. You know, you got a guy in a room that is uh, smiling, laughing. That person shows charisma. And yeah. that patient looks healthy and happy and excited. And that's the state... Uh, we would like to get our patients too, uh, because it changes their lives. It really changes their lives. Stories every day. We hear those stories every day. Yeah, let me tell you about that 90-year-old patient I was telling you about that came in, and she was extremely apprehensive of the dentist. So she canceled on us the first time, and then the second time the caregiver brought her in, and we had a chance to actually have a discussion with the patient. Okay. And once the patient understood what their options are and understood that age is not a limiting factor. And a little bit more back and forth, she started the treatment with us. And now she comes in for her follow-up. She's happy, she's got lipstick on, she's bringing (laughs) bringing, uh, uh, cookies for the staff. And you can just tell something has changed. And it's, uh, uh, it's something that we strive to do. And at that moment, I realized 
this is what I really want to do for the rest of my life. I wanted to get that kind of a feeling to every patient that walks through the door. And something wonderful has happened over the years that these patients that I treat become very close friends of mine. Some I ended up doing other activities with and uh, okay. I end up engaging with and other uh, things in, uh, that uh, make life pleasant. Okay, good. Now, in your office, I guess the way dental implants are normally done, correct me if I'm wrong, is you go to one place that does the surgery. You go to another place that puts the teeth on top and another place that does the imaging. You're, I guess you do it all right there. Aside from convenience, what's the benefit to the patient? Aside from convenience, it comes back to, for example, one of the limiting factors that these patients don't come into our practice for is uh, uh, the price. If you have to go to an imaging center and to an oral surgeon and a prosthodontist and uh, uh, end up, the bills rack up very fast. So the stories that are out there uh, sort of uh, make the uh, patients afraid. It's kind of like the needle stories that are out there. But at the end of the day, if you have everything in house, uh, it, uh, you can save the patients a lot of time. So you and a do lot everything. You do that. You've had a lot of training in the surgery. Absolutely. I've been engaged in this uh, uh, field since 2008. We have trained a lot of doctors in our academy. Uh, uh, I teach it. I learn every day, and uh, I uh, try to make myself better in this uh, in this art of practice of dentistry. Yes. So what about gums? Like if you have bad gums, the bleeding gums, the bad breath, as you guys call it, periodontal disease. Can you do this? Can you still get implants? Absolutely. Most of the patients that present to our office have bad gums and uh, periodontal disease, but that's because there's a bacterial infection that uh, adheres to the teeth and likes the teeth. So if you don't have the option of saving those teeth for them, when we remove the teeth, the gums heal to a nice pink and they're ready to have the implant treatment uh, rendered to them, if that's the case for that, for that particular patient. Now, you say that people could literally, with bad teeth, could come in, you could do extractions and give them their dental implant teeth and they could leave the same day. Is that true? Yes, it's very true. With the latest technologies and guided surgery and CT scanning, it's very possible. But sometimes, for some patients, the treatment might take a little longer, might be a little bit more complex, but we can always get them to the end result that they seek. Are they ever without teeth? Um, never without teeth with us. There is also, if we have to do a longer procedure, we have different ways of making sure that they maintain their teeth uh, for everyday function. Now, in your bio, you said you like saving teeth, that you, in fact, were the root canal guy, like traveling to dental offices, doing root canal, saving teeth. So how does that help you with the implant patients? Well, uh, the, the best thing you can possibly have is your own natural teeth. Um, so we have to do everything we can as dentists to preserve what you have. Uh, an implant is sort of the next best thing to have uh, versus all the other options such as bridges uh, and dentures and so forth. So it's becoming rapidly the standard of care that you don't go after two adjacent teeth that are what we call virgin teeth often and you shave them down and you bridge something that patients can't floss under and have to clean under. Okay. Um, so first thing uh, is to preserve the best you can be conservative and if you can help save the teeth we save them before we even consider an implant scenario but our philosophy has changed now when we can save a tooth and we take it out we think ahead in time what can this patient in the future get and how do we preserve that bone for that patient so the patient might get an implant down the road or be bone graft so back in the day we didn't care we took the teeth out and we said, hey, it's over. Now we care. Now we treat patients differently. We think ahead okay. of time. So whenever we can save teeth, it's important for us to act and save the teeth. All right. uh, but when we can't save them, we take them out. And we, now we have the option of an implant, which is the second best thing to natural teeth. Okay, good. Now we're going to back up for a moment. Because at the top of the show, we said no more dentures. You think you can wipe out dentures in the desert? To wipe out dentures yeah, in the desert? Yeah, where nobody's a traditional denture, no more. Yes, so in the course of the next 20 years, if I keep doing more and more cases and helping people, which I love to do, we might get close to that, but do that's going to be a lot of work. Now, I know a couple denture workers, <laughs> okay, and they never complain. They seem like they're fine. Are you saying there's no such thing as a happy denture wearer? Randy, they're not going to complain to you. They're spending most of their time trying to hide that they have dentures. Okay. They're Good married. Point. They're trying to figure out uh, how to hide their dentures so their wife never sees them with a denture in their mouth. They're constantly wearing glue 
which is a multi-billion dollar industry that uh, they're not happy about. And to clean that stuff and get it off, I imagine it to be a very annoying activity on a daily basis. And then you got these guys that don't go out and make up excuses about why they're not with their friends and they don't go to dinner uh, because they don't know if they, the denture is going to fly out in the middle of a dinner or if they have to run to the bathroom to clean it. So they don't they really... They tell you this on the consoles? Uh, like they're they insecure about their teeth? Well, the patients tell us that okay. after we get to know them a little better, but uh, at the opposite reason, they don't tell. They will never tell you that they have problems with their dentures because they, in the first place, they're trying to hide it. A lot of the 80, 90-year-olds that you, you mentioned earlier they're still, if you believe it or not, they're still in the dating game. They are in yeah. Match.com, they're going out. So when they have a, a something confidence, when we give them a confidence smile, their charisma comes out. When we give them the teeth back and they look in the mirror, they, they realize uh, 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 not only does their inner smile come out, but they realize that this is the first day of their <laughs> new life. Good. So, uh, yes, uh, um, sports is also another issue. For example, uh, have you ever tried or do you have any concept of what it would be like to play tennis with a loose denture? Or, I guess not good, yeah. Or go out golfing or uh, skydiving and all the things that retired people like doing that they have all the time for but are not doing because the real reason is they don't want to go out, they won't want to run the risk of being embarrassed in front of others. Yeah, now, are they, so they're never left without teeth during this process? Never. Is that right? Never. Okay. So from the time they come in, uh, intra procedure, in the, uh, during the procedure, and also post procedure, they will always be with teeth for us. And do they look real? Because I feel like I could spot a denture. <laughs> I can tell you in the office, it's sort of a joke on who's going to get the mirror to the patient first after we deliver the, okay. the, the, de the dentures. Because the, the teeth and the gums are so beautiful and the patient opens their eyes and they're shocked and they choke up a little bit and you're standing there you choke up a little bit, and then it's the most beautiful feeling that you can possibly have when you satisfy another human being. And that's what heroes, that's what heroes look for. That's okay. what they get accomplished. So essentially, us as clinicians that are doing this for other people, uh, some consider us as heroes from time to time. Okay, good, good, good. I have to ask you about the options for dentures. Okay, so the two groups, people that you can't save their teeth, the teeth need to be extracted, and then the denture wear. What are their options when they go to your office, when it comes to dental implants? So they have uh, the simple options of having a few implants put in and a, d a denture that snaps on and off. Okay. Which is much better than having the glue. What can or, they eat with that? Um, they can eat about anything. Uh, I've had stories about people eating carrots, uh, biting into apples, the ones that like corn and cob, they eat corn and cob. So it really... Uh, like two or three implants on the lower... Get a lower snap indenture. Get a lower snap indenture, yes. Okay, uh, no more adhesive with that? No more adhesive with that. That's eliminated in your in your life. Okay. Um, that's the snap on and snap off option. Where, where if you have four or five or six implants, you get a little bit more stability. The next option is to have four or six or eight implants and have fixed teeth that do not come out. So they never come out. And that's a full out. arch of teeth. Supported full arch of teeth, teeth correct. Okay supported and fixed and only we can take it off for them from time to time to clean or have follow-up appointments make sure everything is going well. What could they eat with that? I've had all sorts of stories uh, from patients that range from uh, uh, nuts, certain nuts that they like to uh, eating uh, salads again and chewing that cucumber and then biting into the apple and uh, biting into uh, the corner of the cop. So lots of different stories. I had a patient that came in uh, that we delivered a full arch fixed uh, uh, teeth uh, for that patient. And that patient uh, showed up for a follow-up appointment and, and asked me if they could eat corn in the cob. And uh, I was surprised uh, by the question because uh, it was a bar-supported denture which you can't break. And uh, I uh, responded, you can eat anything you want. And surely enough, a couple of days later, he called me, he had a nice steak, he went out with his wife and had a, had a beautiful time. And uh, since then, he's everything that, uh, uh, that he likes and enjoys, which okay. makes him healthier, which the doctors that he visits also want him to do. Now, what so. about the upper denture? I guess there's suction. So the upper denture is fine? There is suction, but let me tell you a little bit about a life of a denture where before they got to this stage and what they're doing now. When you're eating with dentures, you're not really 
tearing like your front teeth are designed or chewing with your back teeth like they were designed. You're just sort of rubbing the food together and swallowing it. You don't enjoy the taste of it, the spices, the, the salts. The st that's all gone because you have a big thing on the palate that causes the plastic. On the the plastic. Okay. So humans adapt to plastic. After a while, they don't complain anymore. But the fact of the matter is that it's all covered up. So when we give them the, the upper teeth, they're designed in a horseshoe where the top roof of the mouth is not covered at all. So now we get the same response all the time from patients that they can uh, taste their food, they feel the hot and cold, they feel the spices. And uh, that's also the whole purpose of being, enjoy, being able to enjoy a meal besides the nutritional needs. That okay, we, we were talking about a little bit earlier and I, I think I interrupted, but dating. So if you're dating and you have a denture, you're in your 70s or 80s, probably embarrassing right you got a little bit of a secret going on how do you tell the other person I have an adventure you normally don't and you do have a secret it's very tough to uh, to plan around all of the activities you have and a date can go really sour if uh, for some reason or another uh, you have problems with your denture during it so people hide it they'll hide so, it the so, best they can so there's a lot of people with bad teeth uh, you know I guess everywhere right and and we've talked in the green room that people with bad teeth are judged. Elaborate on that. People are, uh, you see a picture of someone that might have cavities and broken down teeth, you automatically assume they're not brushing their teeth, they're uh, not, uh, uh, they're poor, they're not very sociable people, they wouldn't do well with you or your organization. It's just human nature. But when you see a person with a big white smile that brightens up the room, yeah. uh, um, you sort of approach that person differently. That's inherently in us that we can't change. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that person is still the same person. Look at what Hollywood does. When you see all these action movies and all of these comedies, you see people with white teeth. But the villains and the poor ones, they make them uh, 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 dress differently. They give them different sort of teeth, uh, broken up, gray for point. the villains. Yeah, yeah. so there is a, 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 something we can learn from that. Uh, your smile, your whole body is covered up. All we see is your eyes and your smile. And if you look at the research, it's usually smiles being number one, and there's always a little, at times, you know, you have the eyes, people notice your eyes more than you smile, but the vast majority of the research shows. So it's not a point to contemplate. People look at your smile and they judge you based on your smile. Well, you're a dentist. Of course, you think the smile is probably the most important thing. Well, it's not really what I think, it's what research shows. Uh, think about it, Randy. If you had a job interview right now and you had two different individuals there, one smiling. Like two and one, twin sisters. Two twin sisters. Same let's say, background let's say two, Let's say okay. all, all variables equal. One is smiling and the other one is not. You're looking at that person and you realize the one that's smiling, that's not the factor that you're going to hire that person for, but you're looking at the smile and you're thinking to yourself, this patient, this person is uh, uh, happy, they're uh, ecstatic to be here, they're going to do a great, they're going to be positive. great, positive, great addition to my team, uh, and they're right, they're with it. And then you don't have the same impression of the other one. So I would suspect you would hire the one that's smiling more. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, that, no, that, that, that's fair to say. You hire the one that looks happy and well-adjusted and positive. So you see it. There's so many people that don't like their teeth. And is it the fear of the dentist? You know, we've already talked about why they don't come in. But there's a lot, I mean, do you hear that still? Like, no offense, doctor, but I don't like coming to the dentist. Do you no. hear that? No, especially when they're at that stage with what they've gone through. Let's, 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 let's uh, f take a look at what they went through before they ended up in my chair. Um, f all their young years and all the adolescent and, 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 and early 20s and 30s, they went to a dentist. They kept up with their appointments with the promise that they're going to be okay. And then the, the, the problem became more, the root canals, the fillings, the crowns. And then next thing you know, they realize that they're going more to the dentist than twice a year. And they're not getting out of it what they want. So at the end, when they get to my chair, they're happy that they don't have to do that anymore. Okay. But they don't know their options. So once you, I still truly believe that patient education is the most important factor in this process. Once the patient knows exactly how easy it is okay. and how it might change their entire life, we get a completely different uh, uh, response from our patients. So once it's all done, uh, they just come in for maintenance like every six months? Yes. It's just like regular teeth? That's right. Every six months we see them, they come by, usually it's a very quick appointment, uh, and they're always happy. 
It's just, here's a story I'll tell you about a right, lady right. that I had in that took me a long time to convince to get this procedure done. We went in and gave her a full set of teeth, fixed, and she walked out of our office, very excited, started leaving some great reviews for us, but then I noticed something very peculiar. Every time she came in for follow-up, something had changed about her. Her hair was out, nice and blonde. She was working out, taking care better of herself. She was eating better. She was happy. Such a glow in her face. All right. And uh, uh, that, we hear these type of stories all the time of patients that come in, that are excited, and something has changed about them. Um, changed life and experience for most. Now, we should mention um, Medicare. Medicaid does not cover this even with the best PPO insurance, only covers a very small portion. Yeah, but there are financing options, Randy, for, for, for these patients. And there are multiple different ones to meet your uh, financial budget. So uh, a very reasonable monthly payment on some of these cases, uh, okay. some $100, $200, uh, some more, some less, depending on what the patient needs. But there's certainly options outside of the insurance realm for patients with us. And we can certainly stage the procedure. If finances are low and the financing options are an option for the patient at this time, we can focus on one arch or the other arch to at least get them to later upgrade to what they seek or want. And they could, so they could start with a snap in, snap out. I told you this happened to my father, oh, right? Yeah, Started right. with a snap in, snap out. And, and because he was watching my show, he said, my denture's fine, my denture's fine. He saw one of the doctors on my show and he said, I'll talk to the guy. Now he's got a full arch of teeth on the upper and lower. He's 82 years old. He eats whatever he wants. He plays the trumpet. He even is under the impression that young girls like him. And I said, dad, no, you're 82. You know, just because they compliment him on his smile all the time. Sure. But that's common, right? You know, they get their new teeth and... The compliments, yes, and you know, also... Like Patients coming in and having one arch done suddenly say, hey, I'm so happy about this arch and it doesn't match the other one. I want to start looking into that type of treatment. That happens to us a lot as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon, not a race. We can eventually get you there, but f you have to take the first step and find out what your options are. Okay, good. And I told you at the top of the show, when somebody asks me, you know, who's the implant guy of yours in the desert? I, always, I say Dr. Shah. In fact, okay. I said it today. I said, Dr. Shah has the, you know, for dental implants in the desert. And I'm trying not to endorse you, you know, but because of your training and things like that, uh, you know, I would send people to you. So. I really appreciate the confidence and right. I have uh, spent uh, my whole life uh, training and getting to this point where I can care for these people. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for Very your time. Good. All right. Appreciate it. You've been watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.